Hello and welcome to this video on one of the most common roots you'll come across while trying to create bonsai, tap roots. Tap roots are generally a single large root that grows down from the tree and is not able to fit in a bonsai pot. It needs to be removed in order to be grown as bonsai. Despite this, it does have a role in trees growing naturally in the ground. A taproot is described as a single large root. In trees growing naturally, this tends to be a structure going almost mostly straight down and into the soil. It is very strong. This strength gives the tree stability when it is young and thereby won't be pulled out, blown over, or washed out of the ground it is growing from. As a general rule, trees will have just one taproot. This will die off or be replaced by other roots, such as lateral roots, once the tree reaches maturity and is established. These may be quite large and solid, but are not tap roots. In dense, clay-rich or rock-filled soil, there may be multiple tap roots formed. To give a more clear example, a carrot is a tap root, while this tree has lateral feeder roots. A taproot will form from the seed. It is from the radical of the seed that it starts growing. This is the first place in the seed where growth will occur, and it will be the first root that is formed. Then the trunk will come out of the ground as a sprout, and that will continue all the above ground growth. The taproot is the first part of the seed which emerges, and this makes sense as it is also the seed's first attempt at securing its own little slice of land in which to live. It also makes sense that once established, the tree no longer requires such a root, and it is effectively sacrificed. The tap root instead is given up in favour of the desired fibrous mat of bonsai roots that we often want to see. By removing this ourselves, we can make it so the tree has to grow those fibrous roots instead. The tap root itself can come in a variety of shapes. Typically, there are only three that are noteworthy, conical shapes, fusiform, and napiform. Conical roots are, like the name suggests, in the shape of a cone, exactly like a carrot. Fusiform is a little bit different and is more like a sphere, with it being widest in the middle. Napiform are a little bit different again. They are very broad at the top and they continue for quite a time, but only at the very bottom do they suddenly turn in. Most taproots you will encounter while trying to make bonsai will be of the conical form. We've already mentioned one of the problems to do with taproots, and that is that they are both large and strong, and this is one of the reasons why taproots are a problem for bonsai enthusiasts. The other issue is that although many species will lose theirs, not all do. This can include commonly grown oak and pine species. The commonality of both is a problem, or at least important, when it comes to tap roots. The root becomes a problem when you're trying to repot or transfer the trees, for instance. In fact, a tap root can make this process very hard. The fast growth, depth, and vulnerability to death if the tap root is destroyed early in a tree's life makes it so that it can be very difficult to take trees that are juvenile and turn them into a bonsai. If you try to remove the plant, this root must be cut in just about every case. It simply creates too much trouble and often completely prevents the plant's removal. The only way to collect a plant such as Yamadori is to cut this taproot. A common problem to species that retain a taproot over the long term is that they use it to deal with things like strong winds and force very well, oak and pines being common examples where it's relevant and is commonly found as a species used in bonsai. This means severing that taproot is very hard to do. This root acts to keep the tree securely in the ground, and while it doesn't always work, it is largely successful. Severing it takes hard work. The other consideration is, 
going to play into things if you're harvesting during dormancy periods. In nearly all species, the taproot will act as a reservoir of resources, water, and energy. This can be why severing the taproot is adverse to the well-being of a bonsai if collected or repotted in winter. If you cut too much of the taproot off, and there's too much of the tree that requires resources come spring, it may not have the material needed to be able to survive being collected, or in some cases, repotted. There is one slight upside to taproots. That is, at least in theory, if it is still growing quite well on the ground when you sever the rest of the tree from it, it may make it possible for a new tree to start growing from that taproot. This gives that tree a much better head start in life, and is a quasi-effect similar to air layering in that you've severed the tree's flow of sap, but you've also kept a new tree growing. You can use this as a means of creating two specimens from one, if you get a little bit creative. The rest of the time you need to look at just how you're harvesting the tree, what species it is, and consider whether or not you want to remove some, most, or all of the taproot. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it interesting, consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions, or suggestions that you have below.